everybody. I want to introduce my assistant, Michelle Richardson. She is quite the expert at entering this stuff. So between the two of us and Sharon George, my colleague over there, who works with transfer credit, we probably can answer most of your questions that you might have. Uh, when you first sign on to um, your computer and you go into um, faculty services, first place you'd come to is put in your ID, obviously. Sign in with your student number that you want to look at. Come on. Now what I find frequently is people only go to the academic transcript area. That doesn't give you the full picture. You really want to go to the transfer credit articulation and maybe even to the extender documents. Here's a student, you look at this, this is the transcript on their academic transcript. Looks like a pretty good student there. A lot of A's, B's, C's. At your first glance you think this might be a pretty good student. But when you look at the transcript evaluation, you see something considerably different. This student has a lot of I's, W's, few F's, no credits. So they're not as strong as you might think at first glance. The other thing that this does, but the other one doesn't, it tells you on the left-hand side what that course name was when it came in. So if you're kind of questioning what that course really came in as, this is a good place to look to see, hmm, is this what I think this course should be evaluated like or is not? Now this is a transcript from LCC. We find there's a lot of complexity in entering these transcripts so we get accurate information. The history of transfer evaluation at Ferris is long and mixed. We first started entering transcripts back, I think, in the 90s under SIS. We weren't particularly fussy about things like putting C's and 2's and S's and indicating what they were if they didn't meet our requirements. We also didn't have the huge transfer population that we have today. Many of our colleges, that's a third of our whole student body, are transfer students on and off campus. So we're now getting inundated with piles and piles and piles of transcripts. Well, back then we weren't too fussy. If a course came in as history dash dash dash, ah, that's cultural, no problem. If it came in as psych dash dash dash, oh, that's social, no problem. If it came in as biology dash dash dash, hmm, might be a lab, it might not, we look at it. If we think it was, okay, there's a lab, okay, no problem. So that's kind of how we operated for a long time. Then we went to Banner. Banner is much more complex to enter. I used to enter things on SIS, no big deal, da 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 da. I tried that on Banner, yeah, I gave up pretty quick. It's extremely complex and you can make a zillion mistakes. I decided, mm, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this all the time, I better get the heck out of here. And I did. I went to Michelle. Michelle, I see a problem. Help, help, help. Um, and that's kind of what we've been doing. But, okay, we went to Banner. We could put in these C's, we could put in these R's for the general ads, but mm, didn't always happen. It was still kind of loosey-goosey. Then we decided, oh, we're going to have this wonderful new my degree thing. And then we looked at what we had out there. Oh dear, we have a major problem. And there's no way to go back over all those years and fix all that stuff. So what they decided to do was start with the local community colleges for that year. And it was a horrendous job. Many of you probably got involved in it from your majors. But where it really hit was in arts and sciences. That's where the bulk of the problems were and the bulk of the work. Those poor folks had piles and piles and piles of this stuff to evaluate. And of course, some got missed. Occasionally, some categories got mixed because they weren't like ours. But they spent all this time and hopefully had things fixed. Well, they're sort of fixed. Um, and then from there on, we try to catch things. But none of the four-year colleges got looked at. None of the off-campus, out-of-the-state stuff got looked at. So there's a, still a whole lot of stuff out there that's very, very questionable. When you look at the complications of this stuff, this LCC transcript, if you look at the bottom, very last line, 
If you type in Math 111 and you're the input person, and it's a four credit class, you're going to get three credits. The other credit is just going to go off into cyberspace someplace. Unless you go into the back side up on top and go in behind it and put in another credit, the other credit the student earned. So that CRIM 110 was four credits at LCC today, and to get the full four credits, you have to go in the back side and put that other extra credit in. Now, in many cases, this is not a big deal. But when it comes to graduation, if a student's missing a credit, it's a big deal. I had two students in the last week that I audited came up with 119 credits. First place I went was the transcript evaluation. And I hunted and I hunted and I hunted. I found a two credit class that transferred as one. That credit had got dropped. I found a four credit that somebody didn't catch and it was a three and it got dropped. So if you're missing electives or credits to get to graduation, that would be the first place I'd look. Also, supposedly the attributes all pop up. Well, they really don't all the time. BioLab, now I called Marshall Lombrek on this. I says, what does this, this, this is going to get, it doesn't say scientific understanding on these. She says, no problem, it gets picked up. Okay, that's good, I'm glad it does by my degree. But there are some that I really still question whether when you do an audit, does it really get picked up? Then we have students coming from Baker and other term colleges. Their four credit classes transfer is 2.67. In our heads, we count that as three. Now, we're, my degree is struggling with this issue right now. It's something, you know, for College of Business, they need, what, 48 credits of Gen Ed? And it's all got to come up to Gen Ed. But right now, if you put in three cultural enrichments from Baker, you're going to come up a portion of a credit shy, which, you know, in our minds we would ignore. But again, the student might get the idea they have to take another class. So that's always the concern. Some of these came up very nicely, as they should. This Geography 1S, the World Geography doesn't equate to us, but it's 100 level, and it's a social awareness, and it popped up. They don't always do that. So you kind of kind of watch out for that. So I gave you this handout here to try to give you an idea of the different oddball things you might see and how to interpret them. Now, each class transferred in must have a C to transfer, unless it's under the old macro, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, that always adds fun. If they're repeating a class from Ferris, let's say a student had a Math 115 class and got a D, wanted to repeat it at GRCC, took what used to be their Math 104, got an A, transferred it back. That A is not averaged into the Ferris transcript. What we do is no longer count that four credits of D. We give four credits for Math 110, Math 115 from GRCC. In other words, the grade point goes up, but it doesn't go up as much as if they had repeated the class here and got an A. They have to have a C to bring it back to get rid of that D, but unless they take it here and get an A, their overall GPA isn't going to go up that much. Questions on that? Okay. But here are some of the things. Math quant is something you see. That's a, it, will, it fulfills the Math 115 or 117 requirement. Wouldn't fulfill the 116 requirement, I don't believe, from technology. That's a little different deal. Usually that's a course that's a little higher than ours, but not equate to anything of ours. So if you need Math 115 as a prerequisite to a higher level course, Math quant will work. COMH, that's a combination normally of 105 and 121. And you do find that at certain classes, certain colleges. Um, humanities, 1C, 100 level cultural, 2CG, 200 level cultural and global, et cetera, et cetera. The biologies, 1-Z, they're scientific understanding, but unless they have an L, they don't have a lab. So that's the kind of stuff you're apt to see. And hopefully that's picked up by my degree. What I caution everybody is when you run a my degree audit, look to see what falls through and ends up in electives. 
does it really sound like it belongs in the elective category or maybe should you go back and take a look at the evaluation and kind of question it? Might be accurate, might not. Questions on that? Anytime you have a question, raise your hand. If I talk too fast, tell me slow down. If I read fast, then I tend to do the same with talking. Mary, I have a question. Yeah. Can you give me the process you would take for an everyday advisor guide? So I go in and I check the transcript, maybe check the equivalency below. Would you do that backwards? Would you run a my degree audit first and see if anything shakes out? And if it does, then go back? Or would you just That'd probably be the fastest way to see if something weird comes up. Okay. Otherwise, if you run the my degree audit, nothing shakes out as an elective and it all looks the same. It all looks like it belongs. Your gen eds are filled in and everything looks okay. And we can trust that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. There may be some exceptions that we haven't discovered yet, but I feel pretty good about that. You know, sometimes you get some extra stuff that maybe equates to something, but it's not really important for your, you know, as long as your culturals and your socials that fill in the way they're supposed to and your sciences fill in the way they're supposed to, it's when they don't is that's when I start getting nervous on that stuff. Good question. I, I wanted to say on that, Matt, they, just the other day I ran into one with another advisor that the, it was an extra class, a political science class, that it threw it in global, but it would not double dip it into the social awareness. And it, it met in both categories, but for some reason, my degree did not double dip that course. And is, I guess my next question, is it up, us to, uh, up to us to recognize that it should, or can I go look somewhere else and have it say, hey, that should? Well, Bobby, if you've run into that, let me know. I was talking to um, Jim Lindsay, who is our expert on all this good stuff because I ran into that with another program yesterday a couple days ago and what he found out was the sociology 225 that was marked as REG didn't go into social awareness and it was some reason it was marked note share well it should share with that well if it's in criminal justice we don't want it to share with the first social elective and the second social elective but it's supposed to share with Jan Ed so he had to go in and play around with that so the best message for all of you is whatever educational counselor you're working with, that's the person to call and ask about the problem. Should it be sharing? What's wrong with this? Should it be something different? Uh, Mary just works with uh, education. Unless you want all these calls. No, no, no. no. I'll, I'll share. I'll share. I read. Great. <laughs> yeah, and we do get those. You know, we get emails that say, Mary, this looks kind of weird. Would you look at this? And I look at it, and then I copy it. I take a picture of it and send it to Jim Lindsay and say, help. <laughs> This isn't, doesn't look right, Jim. Good questions. Here are the things you frequently find that don't have things that should, they don't have the designators and they should have. So I always get nervous when I see a course that comes in like this. Hopefully the people that are taking in your credits, like Michelle and myself, look at the stuff, catch it, and get it fixed. But again, stuff gets by us. And it might get by the people that are doing it in the other colleges as well. But when I find a history dash, 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 I look at the title first of all. That sounds like it should be cultural, I think. And if I think it should be cultural, if I think maybe it should be cultural and global, whatever, we copy that course description and send it off to arts and sciences and ask, should, should there be some designators on this? They send it off, get it evaluated, put it in, and we send it on. So we're trying to catch that stuff all the time. Sometimes we feel like we're people correcting math papers or something because we're always looking for this stuff. But these are courses maybe from a four-year college that haven't been looked at again, old courses, whatever. So don't hesitate to ask. If you see something that looks a little odd, let the people know. Check on it. I just threw these last two things in because these are where people don't understand sometimes that Logic is not a cultural. It's more of a math course, but we don't count it as either. And that Science 114, students get this one screwed up, because it's one credit of social and one credit of science. It doesn't really fit anywhere, but that's been a little problem class for some time. Frequently, I go back into Castender, which is the very bottom of those long choices, to look at the actual transcript. If I'm really confused, I go look at it. Also, if it's the summertime and our students are coming into orientation and I'm going to make recommendations, I go to this to see if they're taking classes 
that semester or the previous semester and we don't have it yet so I can make kind of a rough evaluation and question the student when they come in. But if you really have questions, sometimes looking at the actual transcript clears it up a lot better. In our college, too, courses over 10 years old can't be used in teacher education programs, so we have to go back and look and see when they took these classes, know whether we should actually count them or not. We have some oddball things. You're going to see what we call linked courses. Who courses together that equals something? You see this a lot with science classes, particularly over in allied health. You see that 202 clause. It's combined with that 203 course down below that shows no credit. You wonder, what? How come that person didn't get any credit for that class? Well, they actually did. They combined it with the 202, and opposite the 202, you see 3 and 5, which is you get 8 credits. That's how they did that. So the bottom one shows nothing, but then up above with the course it linked to, you show the full eight credits, four credits from each one. Very strange. You find those mostly with science classes, but we have found them with math classes. What else, Michelle? Those are the two that come to my mind. Really, it's mainly the science. It's science and the math. You may find even three classes put together and come up with one course that evaluates to it. So it's kind of a weird thing to look at. And again, the attributes are supposed to pop up. But if you look down here, this philosophy of bioethics, it says philosophy 220, and I'm pretty sure that's a cultural enrichment. It doesn't say anything about it being a cultural enrichment. So even our own courses don't always pop up the attributes, and I don't know why. I know Marcia raised it to her, and she says, yeah, they know there's a problem, but... That's a banner problem, and it hasn't been totally fixed yet. Anybody want to take another break? Anything to eat, drink, whatever? Yes, I'd, I'd like to ask something. Okay, I'm sorry, Carrie. <laughs> we could just send it up there, we would. Um, when we get done later, if you want to, I've given you each, those that I knew were coming, I gave you your name and a list of three class, three student numbers you might want to look up and see kind of how yours came in. Um, but there's other things we can look at under transfer credit. And I like to go into academics to the bottom line to transfer area because that's the fastest way to get to a lot of this stuff. If you're a student coming in, there's two things we're going to look at. There's quite a few things we'll look at under this. And then our lovely macro policy. We have so much fun with these macro policies, you just would not believe. I've given you a handout on it. Actually, Mike Ropley put this together when he did a presentation early. We have two macro policies, the old and the new. These are agreements with the local Michigan community colleges that if they stamp their, their transcript with macro, we will accept their classes that they designate as our lower level gen eds. Okay? Mary, I have a question. Yeah. Is that period end of sentence? Because always I've advised that there are some exceptions. Yes, there are lots of exceptions. Okay. Everybody can make exceptions. Everybody can make exceptions. Even with the stamp? Yes. And my second question is, where do I, where, how do I know they actually have a stamp. Is that in the extender document? It should be. We should actually have typed it in in that transcript evaluation. It should say macro in the date it was given. However, <laughs> what's the however, Mary, about receiving macro? You can receive macro much later. I mean, I have students that are graduating send me macro stamp transcript for the very last thing. What it, it doesn't matter so much when you got the macro, it's when you were accepted to Ferris, how we interpret it, and when you started. Those that started before fall 1210 are on the old macro. Under the old macro, your math requirement for Math 115 was waived. All of your lower level gen eds, including REG and Global, are waived, or can be. And we accepted all of your gen eds within that macro that had C minus grades or lower as good. OK? 
kind of yucky, but we did it. But you don't have to abide by that. In elementary ed, no grade can be less than a C. Macro does nothing for them, because every course is set in cement. Macro is meaningless. I tell students, for heaven's sakes, don't waste your time getting that. Most of our secondary are the same. It's just a wasted amount of credit. Letting bring in all this extra credit doesn't do anything for them. So that really varies. Now, the new macro, as of fall 2010, we say their lower level gen eds are done, but they have to take math 115 or the equivalent or higher. And we don't accept any grades below C. However, they still need the number of credits they would need for graduation. So you might have to take some electives. And if you're in, our, if you're in business, you've got to come up with, what, 48 credits of gen ed regardless? Is that what it is, Sharon? 48. Yep. So it depends on your college, your program, what you can and cannot do with those two. It's very messy. We'll be so glad when the old macro is gone. This is what you can waive. You do not have to waive. If your program, like for instance, CJ, if they're going into law enforcement, they need intro to social, and they need intro to psych because they got upper level socials and psychs. Too bad, so sad. If you need a class in English 321 or 311 or 325, and your English is waived and it's a C minus grade, too bad, so sad. Those classes require a grade in C to get into those classes, so you will retake that class here. We don't waive the prerequisites. Thou must meet the prerequisites. So there's lots of exceptions. And it's really it kind of drives you crazy at times. But it's not when you get the macro. It's when you enter the university, which one you're on. And like I said, I don't know how many transcripts we got in from December to January that finally had their last macro stamp on it. They finally got their macro stamp. And those students have to ask for that macro stamp, which is another problem, because they assume that they've met it, okay, the transcript's going to come with the macro stamp, and it gets here and it doesn't. They have to request it in most colleges to get it. So then we go back and look and say, okay, does this get them graduated or doesn't it? So, yeah, we'll be glad when at least we get past the old one and into the new totally. But we've got a lot of old ones hanging out there. That's why I gave you the handout so you can read it. If you have questions, ask your educational counselor if you're confused. I know Sue and I sit down and agonize over these, those macro students on a regular basis. Okay, what can, and I'm sure, Kim, you will be in on that too. <laughs> what can we waive or what should we waive or what can't we do and what should we do and how can we help the student, et cetera. So the sunset on the old one is 10 years? Sunset goes on, well, they should graduate. I mean, they've got to be continually enrolled, so they can't drop out for five years and say, oh, I was under the old macro. Too bad. You've been gone too long. So they should eventually, you know, starting with summer of 2010, they were under the old, fall are under the new. We've got a ways to go, unfortunately. We'll be glad to see it gone. Any more questions on that one? That's a messy thing. Gives everybody heartburn. Here is one old macro person. Look at all those D's we took and C minuses. Kind of makes me ill to look at it. Macro stamp at the bottom. So anything within that macro gets accepted with the C minus as long as the gen ed. Anything after the macro, this is where students screw up. I got the macro, I can get a D in my next class. No. You bring in me and me a, a site class after that date with a D or a C minus, nope, we're not taking it. It's not within your macro. Therefore, too bad, so sad. You don't get that credit. Take it over. Well, that's what those look like. Um, we'll talk a little bit about articulation agreements, residency requirement, transfer guides. Residence requirement is pretty simple. For associate degree, you need 15 credits from Ferris. For a bachelor's, you need 30. You should have half of your credits here at Ferris for a bachelor's. 
But then there's a zillion exceptions for all of our articulation agreements. So it sort of, in many cases, becomes kind of meaningless. Then there's an articulation website that has all kinds of cool things on it. Um, Michigan Community College one. Lots of stuff out there. You can look at the listing of all the community colleges and their articulation agreements. Some of them, it's just their transfer guides. We all put out transfer guides for our programs. There's no exceptions made in those. Those are how courses. If you're at XYZ College and you want to come into, say, criminal justice, these are the classes you take that will fit. We don't make exceptions for those. But if they're an articulation guide, there's probably some exceptions there. Um, we also have them with some post-secondary institutions. I don't think we have any of these, but some people do. So here's Delta, and here are some of their articulation guides. Now we have one, we have an articulation guide for criminal justice at Delta. And it looks a lot like our regular transfer guide and our regular check sheet, except there's some exceptions. For instance, as Literature 286, they can substitute some 200-level cultural enrichment. We're not going to bring that class off campus. Instead of taking a certain social awareness here, we'll substitute something. We'll also substitute English 321 for Lit 343. So in articulation agreements, you have to find some substitutions that you wouldn't find in a transfer guide. That's what ours kind of looks like. It's the rest of it for the first two years. Um, we have a lot of career technical centers agreements, articulation agreements. I think technology has probably a lot more than most people do. 1,200. 1,200? Okay. We don't have that many. <laughs> um, but these are outlined in here. And if you go into this website, explains the whole process. Now here's where students screw up. See what these little instructions they're supposed to do? Okay. They're going to be in this career center for two years in this program. They have to earn a B and they have to get a test or they have to do a portfolio or whatever. But what they forget to do, they forget to fill out the form. So they come to orientation in the summer. Gee, I'm supposed to get credit for blah, blah, blah. Have you filled out the form and had it sent in? Uh, no. <laughs> so we send them back to the Career Center to get the form filled out, get it signed, get all the paperwork, send it in. What we do in our colleges, and it's not super crucial with what we get, we'll just schedule around what we think that's going to come in as if they get it take other classes, and if they don't, we didn't really do everything they were supposed to do to get it, they can take that course next semester. But it probably gets more complicated in a lot of the other colleges than it does with us, because we don't have hardly any. And the ones we do have aren't going to slow anybody up. But it gives them an idea of the certain things they can get and how many credits they could get. Now you really want to find out exactly what they get. You go into that handbook. Yep, if I get it. And it'll tell you, you're in this thing, you get this articulation assessment, and this you would get this particular course and these credits. If you're in this, you're going to get this course. So you go right down to the program you want, and you can look to see exactly what credits it's going to substitute for if you have that articulation agreement and everything's put together the way it should be. And comes in. So that's kind of handy. I like to use it during orientation, particularly if a student says they think they've got something, I can go in here and wiggle my way around to get to this and then check it. Transfer guides. We all have these transfer guides that we do for all the community colleges that we put out and try to update every year. It's a horrendous task. Showing what a student at another college can take that will fit exactly into our programs. The problem is I find a lot of the counselors at the community colleges don't know about these. I had a student call me from Washtenaw the other day. He says, my counselor said, don't even take courses here. Just come to Ferris because there isn't anything. And I said, oh, yeah. I says, there is. And I showed him. And, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. I'll go back and show this to my counselor so they know that there is such a thing. So they're all there. We had the same thing with GRCC. They didn't list us. <laughs> they said, 
You don't have any secondary ed programs at Ferris. Duh. Well, of course, now Lene is down there and she's fixing all that, <laughs> fortunately. But somehow they don't find these things. On f so you go into your college, pick your college, pick your program, I'll pick CJ again. Okay, I'm going to pick Mott. If you're going to Mott, what are you going to take? And then we list all the things they can take at Mott. And this is going to be exactly, you know, there's no, no substitutions for literature here. You're going to take that. So we could just go through, there's no exceptions. It's the way it is right here on our campus. That's what a transfer guide is, different than an articulation. Articulations have exceptions normally. Transfer guides do not. Questions on those? Okay. Here's one from Allied Health. There are different formats depending on your college and your program. Everybody's got their own kind of thing. My favorite site of all is the advising guide, which Deb and her folks take care of. This, if you want a question answered, 99% of the time you can find it in this advising guide. I love this thing. Oops, I keep wanting to do what I do at my own office. It's also under faculty services over here. So you've got two places you can get to it real easy. Got all kinds of good stuff. We're going to look at credit by examination programs. Then we're going down and look at course equivalencies from course from other colleges. All of that stuff is on here, plus a whole lot of other wonderful information. I talk about this in orientation. I try to get the parents and the students to go in and use this because they find it really, really helpful. CLEP, student, brand new student coming in without credit in a certain area can take a CLEP test. If they haven't been to community college, say if they've taken a science class, well, no, you can't take the general science CLEP. But CLEPs are a really cheap way to get college credit. Tests last year were 102 bucks. And here is there's a whole long list of how things come in. Well, but let's say it was a student that could get out of this American literature, they would get six credits for their 102 bucks. That's a wonderful bargain. Many of them come in and want to take the English because they have a 24 in English. I recommend they do it. Now, this is one that doesn't come in right away. Normally, you can go take the CLEP test, get your results that day. This one's got to be sent off. So in the students in the summer, I tell them, okay, take the test. We're just not going to schedule you for English 150 this semester. We're going to think that you probably do. But if you don't, well, you can get it next semester. It won't really hold you back. We'll move ahead with some other stuff. But there's just a lot of stuff they can take out there. Really can save them a bundle of credit, money. Because I've had students come in, crap out of 16 credits or more. They got a first full semester done for hardly any money at all. So I really push this with good students. If they have a high ACT and they got good grades, I say, hey, you want to consider doing this and get some cheap credit? Parents really like that idea. Believe me, they love that idea. Um, then the students come in with advanced placement credit. They've taken advanced placement tests in high school. They've taken the test. We don't know the results till the middle of July. So they come in in June. I ask them, okay, did you take any AP tests? Tell me what they are. We're going to assume you've passed them. We're going to schedule around them. But then I show them this website, and they can see if they passed it, what credits they're going to get. And again, it's a wonderful way for students to get a jump start on college. They don't even have to pay anything for these because it comes from their high school experience and what they did there. But I show them this quite often. Questions on that? Okay. Course competency assessment, that's a proficiency test. And there's different types of proficiency tests. There isn't a CLEP test, so maybe the department has a certain test. Or they can put together a portfolio and have that examined. That can get kind of expensive probably cheaper to take a competency test. But there are students that come to our office, they fill out the form, they've met with the department, they think they can pass the test, they pay for it, take the test, and if they pass it, they get the credit. Of course, no grade, but you get the credit. Again, that's a pretty cheap way. If you're pretty confident you're going to get the credit and pass it, 
We've seen students do it with microcomputer applications. That's one of the things that they frequently test out of. This is something I didn't even know about until I got into this. Here's an actually AP test for international students. I didn't know this thing existed. I, I called around to find out about it. It took me a while to find somebody who knew what it was. <laughs> Lucia explained, explained it to me over international programs. But yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, here are all the things they can get credit for coming from another country. It's an international thing accepted all over the place. So if they take one of these tests and they pass it, they get the credit. I've never seen one. It's actually not just international IB. Can, um, for example, Clarkston High School has IB classes. Really? And yeah, it, it's stateside too. Really? If Certain high schools can run IB accredited programs and do the testing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good news. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that was brand new to me. I never seen one before until I got in there. I started, well, what the heck was that? <laughs> yeah, there's a handful of schools in the state of Michigan, so you might have freshmen that come in. The one thing you have to be cautious about is that there's different levels of IB, and it has to be the upper level, as you can tell. It has to be mm -hmm. an HL level. Mm -hmm. There's an SL. There's a standard level and an HL. So when students come in and say, I'm in an IB program, be cautious with waiving things and letting them go into the next level until you see an official transcript come through. Because we had a situation this spring or the summer where somebody had English, but they had SL level English. Ah. Somebody put them up in 250, so we had to do a, a back wave for that because it was our error. Mm -hmm. But you just have to be very cautious to make sure you get the transcript before you automatically jump them into the next class. Good to know. Yeah, and all the years I've been here, I've never seen one. So. Yeah, well, that's kind of cool. I didn't know this existed. The other thing we're going to look at is transfer course equivalencies from other colleges. If you have a student who wants to take a course at home in a certain class, this is where you go. Show them how to go do this. You pick your college, and if you click on a college, all of their prefixes from that college pack pop up. Then you click on that prefix, and it'll tell you the listing of their classes. For instance, here's Mott. Click on astronomy. The first two you'll get are astronomy 117 and 18. It also is a Kindle course. They've got theirs on here. But it tells you scientific understanding, understanding lab. So there's a couple of them. If you're looking for a science with a lab, okay, this one works. If you're going to Mott. Literature, world, call, world novels, that comes in as our exact course. It's a cultural. And here's one of those little oddball things you'd have to interpret. Latin American literature comes in as literature 2 CG, literature general credit 200 level, cultural and global. And then we've got this American literature. It says literature general credit, cultural enrichment. Okay, so at least it should come up as cultural, but I'm not sure it's going to, without a designator, if it's actually going to come up that way. So I would kind of question that. And would it be a 200 or a 100? It probably wouldn't equate necessarily to ours because ours is a higher level. But I would kind of question this if I saw it. Here's another one. 2RS, sociology level, race, sociology. Not global. Here's another one. Ours comes out exactly. So you can find a lot of good things on here. Now this one comes out exact. This one's another one I would question. Psych, general credit. I strongly suspect that's supposed to be psych 2-S, social awareness. We have a 400 level adolescent psych. It wouldn't equate to that because this is only a 200 level. But this is one I would question. I would copy the course description, send it off to have it looked at. Because I suspect it's probably was missed, not caught, something. Here's some more. Early African pre-European, so it would be 2CR, 2 cultural race, <coughs> not global. There's another one, recent African American history, of course it's not global because it's in our country. But you're going to find these type of things when you look up these different colleges and try to find equivalents. Here are the sciences, now this is kind of cool. This one credit is a biology 1ZL. Oh, they got their lab, there's only one credit. You've got to come up with seven more credits. <laughs> Here's another one for one credit. This is not valid. This means this course they're no longer offering. 
but it might show up from a transcript from somebody who took it earlier. We've had a lot of returning students, you know, with the recession coming back that have classes way back when, and they might very well have this course. Is there a standard for how way back when we go? Depends on your program. Like for in education, they have to be within the last 10 years. Others, really, it's pretty wide open depending. Now, for one of your major classes, you might think, no, I don't really think that's appropriate. But yeah. we get to make that call. You would make that call, yeah. If you decided something came in and you say, you know, this thing's 20 years old. It really doesn't have any relevance to today. Even though it popped up that way, we really shouldn't count that. So you would have that choice. Now here's where you get these combinations where we link them together normally. For instance, they want to take Biology 205. Well, they're going to have to take two classes, Biology 152 and 153. If they only take 152, they're going to get 1ZL. It's going to be a 100 level lab scientific course. The same with this. But if you want the equivalent of 205, you're going to have to take them both to get our Biology 205. Their one course is not enough for that course. You need two. And you do find that, particularly in the sciences and particularly in allied health, where they need, or you would in arts and sciences too, where you need specific science classes. And if they only got half of the course, too bad. And our Biology 121 and 122 frequently are problems too, because they don't divide the courses like we divide the courses so they don't come in unless you've got two of them you're not going to have that whole year of our biology. Now are, are their advisors aware of this as well? No idea. Because it's, it's great once the kid gets here we can tell them but before the kids get here. Yeah the, the quality and knowledge of advisors really varies across the colleges. Yes? Is there a, in Banner or in my FSU, a way where we could put in a Ferris class and find the equivalent at the community college? There the used to be. Used to I know. It just broke my heart when that went away. Yes, you could get all kinds of opportunities. There's no way in the current system? Well, Not the, no, it's a factor. We, we don't even, we can't even do it anymore. Well, you can go to the Michigan Transfer Network. I guess that might work if that's up to date and accurate. But is it? I don't even use that much. But no, we used to have this wonderful way you could go in and type in a class and we'd give you. Yes. Yeah. Especially for those going back when I've got the class in summer. Right, exactly. Rather than us trying to figure out right. what the code system is that they're yep. using. Yeah, we used to be able to do that real easy. schools, all the CCs, everybody has their stuff there. It's supposed to be updated that you can put, plug in what institution wants to receive the class. So you can put Ferris State, you know what class we want it to be. You can run it against every school in the state and see some examples. Can we add that to the transfer uh, department my FSU as a link on the side? Well, I don't think the records office really wants us to use that because of the updating that it may not be it's supposed to be updated so often. The schools are supposed to be sending everything. But at least that gives us a better, a general idea, I mean, as to what it is. We and just can't can promise that. So they can look, but just but I just want to verify the community college. I always put that in there. Verify. Yeah, you could get that for your list and then go into this to check and see, okay, is that really correct? Are we really evaluating? Because our value, what happens too that makes us all a little crazy is the community colleges, they change their numbers, they change the number of credits, they change their prefixes, they do all those things, and we do all those things, and then we evaluate things differently from time to time, and you know, it gets really kind of messy. Like, math, for instance, Math 104 at GRCC came in as our Math 110. Well, now Math in 104 no longer exists at GRCC, it's Math 004 or something. They don't give credit. Therefore, we can't give credit. So you get 
those kind of changes that take place. And like I showed you that very first slide, LCC, a lot of their three credit classes are now four credit classes. So, the, you know, we're not the only one that keeps changing things. They keep changing things. So, yeah, it's tricky. I guess my best advice is question what you see. If anything doesn't look right, ask your, uh, your educational counseling office to look into it for you and see. Because we get, we have quite a few off-campus advisors. Maria Putt frequently, she goes over these things with a fine tooth comb, boy. She finds something she suspects isn't quite right. She lets us know and we copy it and send it off and say, okay, is that really right or not? Frequently, she's caught something that, you know, has kind of slipped by. So we look for it, they look for it. So when you do, in my degree at it's wonderful and it works much better with our regular students than it does when we have a lot of transfer students but you really got to take a cautious look at what comes out and question. Don't be afraid to question. Don't take it as blind faith because the student... And what worries me, why we try so hard to get ours corrected is we're afraid the student's going to do an audit and think they need classes they really don't. And they're starting to use that system a lot. So that's what really makes me nervous because I don't want them... Because I know from previous experience that students um, tend to believe the computer. The computer says, well, the computer must be right. Computer is not always right. 